The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you wherever you may be. This is Comfortably Zoned Radio, and you're listening to the 50s, when bums and gents walk the streets of New York. My name is Peter Trunk, and my partner, as always, is, Ra- is Ronnie Rabinowitz out there in Minnesota. Ronnie, how are you today? Good, Peter. How are you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the winter doldrums have passed. It's uh, 78, 82, something like that. Yeah. You're between 78 and 82. The sun is shining. Everything is wonderful. That's you know, great. You know, it's baseball wonderful. season is in full bloom. It is, it's good to be alive, you know? That's right. And, That's uh, right. I, I, life is good. Life is good. That's right. I was, uh, I was talking to a guy. I was in um, my local um, Home Depot uh-huh. the other night, and I saw a guy around my age, I suppose, tall guy with gray hair, and he was wearing a um, a New York Giants hat. Okay. And and baseball hat. Mm-hmm. Now sometimes yeah. sometimes when I go up to a person that has that hat on, yeah. uh, I I look at the hat, I'll point up to the hat and I'll say, New York Giants, Polo Grounds? And they'll say <laughs> to me, No, this is just a Mets a black Mets hat. <laughs> you know. Black Mets. But anyway anyway, I thought I'd do it to this guy. I walked over to him, I pointed to his hat. I said, New York Giants, Polo Grounds? He said, yeah. I said, oh, wow, I'm an old Brooklyn Dodger fan. So we <laughs> struck up a small, little tiny conversation, little baby conversation yeah. and stuff. But he said, that, I asked him who his favorite giant was, and he uh-huh. said his favorite giant was Johnny Antonelli. Really? The, uh, I remember the left-handed that. pitcher. Left-handed so I said, pitcher. wow, Johnny Antonelli, I remember that name. Yeah, he used to pitch against the Brooklyn Dodgers all the time and this and that. Yeah. And I said, I wonder if you know, I know something, I know a trivia uh, fact yeah. about, about Johnny Antonelli. Tell me. And, and he goes, Are you telling well, this? You're telling this. Yeah, I'm telling him. Okay. I'm yeah. the Dodger okay. fan. He's the Giant yeah. fan. Yeah. And he's the, he's the Johnny Antonelli fan. <laughs> you know, that was his favorite Giant. I said, he said, I know exactly what you're going to tell me. Before you even say it. So I said, okay, go ahead. And I'm smiling, big smile. He goes, in 1951, Bobby Thompson was the toast of the town because he hit the home run, the shot heard around the world. But yet three short years later, the Giants traded him. They traded Bobby Thompson. And they traded him to the Braves for Johnny Antonelli. Milwaukee Braves, right. Right, exactly. I said, right. well, you know what? That's not the trivial thing about Johnny Antonelli I was thinking about, but that's a great fact. You mm-hmm. know, you figure you figure Bobby Thompson hit that home run. He had it made at the polo grounds and being in New York. Sure and, and yet three you years later, they Maynard. traded him. They you traded him. For Maynard. I know. But, you know, we're always lamenting. The, we're always talking about the fact, and this is a very poor comparison but you and i have always talked about how callous the dodgers were in attempting to trade jackie robinson in 1956 the winter of 1956 but if you think about it here's a guy bobby thompson he did he did the unthinkable for your for your franchise right he puts you all over the newspapers all around the world with your shot heard around the world Uh and you trade him three years later well, for Johnny they did. They traded him for Johnny Antonelli, and I said that's not the trivial thing I was thinking of. He goes, "Okay, what is it? What's the trivial thing about Johnny Antonelli?" I said, "Here it is." I said, "When Johnny Antonelli first came up in 1948 with the Boston Braves, he was only 19 years old." Okay. And the guy goes, "Yes, yeah, so what?" So I said, yeah, "So what?" I said, "When he first pitched in a game for the Boston Braves." His catcher was Del Crandall, who was also 19 years old. And the catcher for the Braves, Milwaukee Braves. The catcher for the Braves. 
right? right. But in 1948, yeah. Del Crandall was 19 years old. Right. And right. Antonelli and Crandall in 1948 made up the youngest battery in the history of Major League Baseball before and since. No battery really? in the no battery in the history of baseball has been that young. Nineteen, 19 and nineteen. Wow. How do you like that? The guy that's says, crazy. Holy crap. He goes, That's I bet crazy. It blew him away. That's, yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. He he said, Wow, that's a great that's a great trivia thing. I said, Yeah, yeah well that, there there's your Johnny Antonelli. I said, and of course we all know Johnny Antonelli in the fifty four World Series for the uh, New York Giants, won game number two, and he relieved in the deciding game in game number four. He right. said, yeah, I knew that. I knew that. I think he was. <laughs> but anyway. Isn't that something? You know, I never knew that. You are, a, you are a wealth of information, my friend. <laughs> you are. Yeah, but you know what? All, all the stuff that I know, Ronnie, all the stuff that I know about baseball, yeah. that and – that and two dollars will get you a medium sized coffee. <laughs> <Duncan Tony. laughs> you're right. You're right. It ain't worth nothing. It, it's worth a zero. It's just. It's good when you talk to older guys. You know, you sit around and you you're at a barbecue or something, and you sit around or you're in a bar and you, and you start talking about the old days and baseball, and then it's good to have all that knowledge. That's right. But any, That's right. any other time, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. you know, can't take it to the bank. Right. Yeah, you can't take that to the bank. You no. won't even get a half a penny. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, I thought that was amusing. That's that was a great funny. story. Great story. That was funny. He said I'll that he was such a big fan. Yeah. He, he was such a big fan when he was a yeah. kid. I later found out he's like two years older than I am. Okay. So the guy, you know, so, you know, he was right in my wheelhouse. He said he was such a big fan that he would listen to the Giants on the radio even mm-hmm. when they were in spring training, when it, I, really? I think they, I don't know back then if they trained in Arizona. I think they did. They trained like in Scottsdale or something. I but think the li- Giants did. The Dodgers, yeah. of course, were in Florida. We were in Vero Beach, right? But yeah, right. They, 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 he used to listen on the radio to, you know, Russ Hodges. I said I did the same thing with with uh, Vince Scully. I listened Vince to the Scully. Hodges when they were. When they were in, in uh, sure. spring training, the only thing Absolutely. that I hated, the only thing that I hated when the Dodgers were in spring training, and I listened mm-hmm. to them on the radio. You know, my my older brother would say to me, "Hey Pete, the Dodgers are on the radio tonight." I said, "It's not even opening day." He said, "No, no, no. Down, they're down in spring training. They're playing a game down in Vero Beach at Holman Stadium at night, and and it's going to be on the radio. We can listen to it." Uh, while we were, in the, we were going to the bedroom, turn on the radio. We had a radio on our uh, sure. shared a bedroom. We had a radio on the bureau. On the nightstand, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, we yeah, put the radio on, <laughs> and there's Vince Scully, you know, talking about yeah. Schaefer beer and Lucky Strikes and all that stuff. And, you know, mm-hmm. the Dodgers were playing, and I'm all excited and shit. And he goes, <laughs> and pitching, pitching for Brooklyn tonight is Bob Darnell. I look at my brother, and I go, Paul, who the hell is Bob <laughs> Darnell? He yeah. goes, well, it's spring training. It's spring training. They're they're using, you know, All they're this, using yeah. young guys. So right. then, then 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 he tells us that uh, Dick Gray is playing third base. Mm-hmm. Dick Gray, who? Yeah. Then yeah. he's saying uh, Bert Hamrick is in right field. <laughs> I look at my he's brother. I go, you sure this is? You sure this is the Brooklyn <laughs> sure Dodgers? The Dodgers? Then he goes, <laughs> Bob Lillis is at second base. Okay. I'm going, wait a minute, where's Gilliam? Where's Reese? <laughs> Third base, where's, you know, where's Jackie? He gets, right, exactly. Uh, shortstop is Chico Fernandez. Yeah, I who, remember him. Okay, yeah, sure. And in center field, instead of Duke Snyder, was Don Demeter. Yeah, I remember him. Okay. And at first base, instead of Gil Hodges, was G- Jim Gentile. Uh-huh. And, and the catcher, <laughs> instead of Campanella, was John Roseborough. Was it Rose so I'm thinking, or was it Wait a minute. We got names like Darnell, Fernandez, Gray, Demeter, Gentile, yeah. Roseboro, Lillis, Hammer. Remember, you have to remember something. You have to remember. This is like 1956. I'm like right. 10 years old. Right. And 
And Jim Gentile has not made a name for himself as he did like six years later. Right. You know, with the Baltimore Orioles when he hit like Baltimore Orioles, right? Right. Yeah, right. And and yeah. John Roseboro, no one knew who John Roseboro was. No right. one knew who Don Demeter was. No one, no one knew who Chico Fernandez was. Hey, right. I got and news the other guys, John Roseboro. John Roseboro right. played baseball in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. There you go. That's a beautiful yeah. thing right that there. A, that was a Dodger uh, franchise at that time. That's funny. And then he went to St. Paul and played for yeah. the Saints. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, you know, we know we know John Roseboro because of Sandy Colfax and the Los right, Angeles Dodgers, and, right. and we know Jim and Neal right. hit all those home runs. Right, exactly. Yeah. And we yeah. know Don Demeter had a few good years with the Phillies and the Tigers and stuff. Mm-hmm. And we know Chico right. Fernandez played for the Phillies and stuff. But when you're right. 10 years old, and this is right. before, you know, <laughs> you guys' names start. come over the radio, and I'm going, <laughs> no Reese. No Robinson, no Snyder, no Hodges, no Campanella, no Erskine, no Newcomb, no nobody. I, I said to my brother, I'm going to sleep. I don't even want to, you know I don't even want to listen to this stuff. So the, the guy at the Home Depot, by the time I was telling him that story about not knowing the names in spring training and stuff like that, he was bored. With He wasn't really a gigantic baseball fan, I guess. Yeah. He was just yeah. bullshitting me. He just said, oh, I got to go. I said, yeah, nice talking <laughs> with you. Take it easy. Bye-bye. And I walked away. But, uh, you know, it got me thinking about all those all those memories. It's really funny. Right. right. Yeah. It, it is right. funny, funny, funny. It reminds me, were... too, because uh, – go ahead. No. Go. Oh, I remember – now, the Dodgers have already moved to L.A., and – I used to listen to him on the radio at night. Now, okay. I'm in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I go to high school. Um, but I had my, my baseball cards. They were all put in, in teams. Okay. And if they were playing the Phillies, I'd have the Phillies stack there and the Dodgers. I'm listening to the game. And I could pick up a game in Philadelphia, Chicago, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, all the clear channel stations. Yeah, was you, could. you know, L.A. would start at 9.30 our time or 9 o'clock our time, and, and it was 7 o'clock in L.A., but and, and 8 o'clock in uh, Pittsburgh, or, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 sure. So I listened to all the games. Uh, I had a scorebook. I got my, my baseball cards. I was having fun. So And I'd stay up till midnight or 1 o'clock, you know. Yeah, sure. The game was over. But I, we lived right on, right on Lake Michigan. Okay, so you could get a great signal. But every once in a while, there'd be a long drive. It's going way, way back, and you'd hear, Psh! and you didn't know what happened. You know? Oh. It faded. It faded. It, it would disappear. Yeah. It would disappear. I... Then it would come back again. Oh. What the <laughs> hell happened? <there? laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Isn't, that, isn't that funny? Yeah, late at night. <laughs> Late at night, yeah. for some reason, you can, and it's still true yeah, today, of course. It'll be, it'll be true forever. Uh, late at night, you can get those strong stations. Sure, you could. You can get strong stations, stations at night. You there can't get them in the daytime. No, you can't get them in the daytime. It was all AM, right? Yeah, of course. It was right. all AM, sure. Yeah. It was all AM, and you know what? Sure. Uh, a few years ago, uh, 2000 and, uh, oh, I don't know. Started maybe in the early 2000s when I retired. Yeah, I, I had this. I had this thing when I retired. I retired in 2003, and I was relatively young. I was only 56 years old when I retired. And when I retired, I said to myself, you know what? One of the favorite things in life, uh, you know, because people said, oh, you're going to enjoy yourself. You're going to enjoy yourself. You're going to enjoy yourself. Well, you know, I wasn't a rich man. I'm still not a rich man. And I yeah. said, you know, how can I enjoy myself? Well, I love baseball. And I always loved baseball on the radio. Sure. So I, I would go know. out. Yeah. So I would go out. This is when I was first retired. I would yeah. go out on the deck in the back of my house mm-hmm. at night. At night, it was yeah. dark, like about 9 o'clock. And I would <laughs> have this really good radio. I have this really good, good radio. Very mm-hmm. strong, very, very good, very expensive, too. And I used to... Yes. Take this radio, it's a portable, 
and I would take it out on the deck, and I would search for baseball games. Sure. And I would get, and I would get one of the strongest ones. I would get, no matter where they were playing, it didn't matter where they were playing. Yeah. I would get the Boston Red Sox. Sure, of course. Uh, and, and the reason I got them so strong was because it was a, it was a Connecticut station. Station, right, right. Okay. And I live in New Jersey and Connecticut, not that right. hell of a far. But no, I'm talking, no. if they were playing the uh, Angels out in California, mm-hmm. I still got it. And it was still strong. Because, because you got the Connecticut the, station. Right, okay. exactly. But if I, was getting, the, I was getting the guys. Connecticut pick. Right. So I, I was out of luck. It was, it was, <laughs> Ronnie, it was funny. All summer long, Yeah. I listened to to the Red Sox. Baseball. I knew I knew all of their commercials. <laughs> I knew their I knew their announcers. I knew sure. everybody who, you know, played and what their white name was and how much they weighed and what their batting average was and I just followed them completely. And it was so frustrating when they would play a day game because if they yeah. weren't on ESPN, yeah. I couldn't get them on the radio. I don't know if there was an ESPN then. In 2003? Sure. Oh, 2003 there was, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure there was. <laughs> but I, but I, if it was a day game, I couldn't get them on the radio in the back. No, no. You know, so I would just do the night games. I listened to all the night games. And don't you know, they win the pennant, the playoffs, and the World Series. Yeah. <laughs> and then they won it again in 2007. Yeah. And then they won it again in 2013. And I became very enamored of that. I, I, you know, I listened to the Red, you know, the, the Red Sox are on, on my phone. They're on the computer. Really? They're on the TV. I would rather go out on my deck yeah. and find that Connecticut station sure. and listen to them, listen to them in the dark, you know, mm-hmm. with just a little yeah. porch light on, and, and <laughs> listen to it. It's really great. Oh, I love it. Nice well, and cool I love at it. night, you know. It's it. nice and yeah. beautiful. Baseball on the radio, it's really something. It was best. It really we is. Used to, my son and I, my son Jeff and I, he would uh-huh. be in high school, and we'd be driving around all night listening to Dodger games on the radio in the car. Really? Really? Because certainly you can really get them good if you're outside, like you did outside. Yeah. Yes. So like two idiots, we'd be driving around, <laughs> <laughs> you know, drinking up the gas, you know, and just yeah. saying, watching the Dodger games. Listening to the Dodger game on the radio. Yes, yeah, crazy, unbelievable. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, you get a, you get a real clear signal late at night. I just you get a real clear signal late at night. Right, uh. that's right, that's right. So, it's fun. Yeah, those were the I days. I got a call this know. week. I got a you call did what? This week. I got a call this week from a very dear friend of mine. His okay. name is Jeff Krause. He's up in uh, in Canada. Alrighty. Big baseball fan. And he's flying me up there in July to uh, speak in a golf tournament dinner about Jackie wow. and spending a, a few days with them. Then we're going to drive to Toronto. We're going to watch a game with the Blue Jays. And then we're driving to Cooperstown. And I'm going to be speaking at the Hall of Fame. You're I'm kidding so me. excited. No. You're kidding me. Right. No. Can you imagine? That's fantastic. You can about a week. Isn't that fabulous? I'm so oh excited. Oh, my God. We'll you be in, have in to have town on the 14th of July. You have to have somebody videotape that. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. I got to see that. Yeah. yeah. That's sensational. How far are you from Cooperstown? Oh, pretty far. Pretty far. far. That's, 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 uh, far. I've been there twice. Or yeah. was I there three Sounds times? Good. I can't remember. I know I've been there twice. I might have been there. I've been there times. twice. I've spoke there twice before. It, it it's quite a quite a ride. Really, you did. Well, it's uh, yeah. I've spoken there twice before, but I was wow. in touch with Jeff Idelson today. Uh, yesterday, we had a nice chat on the phone. Amazing. And uh, yeah, Cooper's so it's going to be fun. Yeah, it'll be. Fun. Well, I'll say. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be great. Oh man. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. It is exciting. I'm it very is exciting. Excited. Yeah. And, and, well. and for a baseball fan, 
no matter what team you love, to walk down the street in Cooperstown, it's like you're yeah, going to heaven. Special. It's definitely special. Everything is baseball. Everything. And, you know, all those shops, all those stores, all those places, they're just Great. wonderful. The places right. that you can eat, the places you can buy sure. memorabilia. That's it's, right. It, it's really amazing. <coughs> it's absolutely amazing. Yeah. It is. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Yeah. You know, it, it's a seasonal thing, I would suppose. I don't think they do much of it's anything quiet, in the wintertime. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Although the Hall of Fame is open all year round. Oh, sure it is. Oh, yeah. there's no doubt but about I mean, that. But there's not many yeah. visitors. Then. It's just yeah. people from Syracuse, people from Malvin, you know, around the area. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty far ride for me, but I've been there. It's wonderful. I, I love it. I absolutely I love loved it. it. I couldn't believe my eyes and ears. It's just really good. I never it's, go. It's hard I to never go there. an induction day. That's too no, much. That's I, I don't crowded. Like it too much. Much too, too much. crowded. Yeah. And, it's and overboard. It's not even right at the Hall of Fame. It's in a different area. Yeah. We don't have it right there at the Hall of Fame. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, both times when they flew me in there, I had to fly to Albany. Then they had a car meet me. And I, it was an hour and a half drive from Albany. Yeah. In the middle of, in the middle of nowhere. Damn. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be exciting. Wow. Well, I'm I'm getting nervous for you just thinking about it. <laughs> That's exciting. It's not new. Isn't that great? I'm so. Yeah, excited. it is really great. Yeah, That's really yeah. great. That's great. Now, to now when you friends. speak up there, when yeah. you speak up there, it's not is it going not necessarily going to be young people. Like normally, no, you speak to young people, right? No, I do adults too. I mean, I, I've done a lot of corporations and things like that. Oh, okay, okay. I was in New Jersey a few years back at Unilever, which is a huge corporation, not too far from you. Oh, in New Jersey, yeah. It used to be Lever Brothers, it's now Unilever. Okay, okay, I've heard of Okay, for a diversity diversity day program, but no, yeah, the Hall of Fame. It's it's um, adults and children, you know, tourists. But both times when I spoke there before, it was in April. So school okay. was still in, you know. So there wasn't a big attendant, but they'd fill up that bullpen theater. So that was fun. So this will be fun right in the heart of the summer, a couple of weeks before Oh, yeah. Reduction. And the kids are out of school. Yeah, it'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. That's great. Yeah. That's wow. Hall of Fame. What a trip it was. That's yeah. nuts. Yeah. Oh man, the only the then, only better place the only better place you could speak would be uh, Dodger Stadium. <laughs> right, right. That would be. Yeah. That's on my bucket list someday. I hope. Yeah. Why not? Would that be great? Why not? It'd be yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about. It. And then you know Curtis Granderson's with the Blue Jays. Oh yeah, he is. That's right. And, and you're a friend he's of his. a good friend of mine. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Hopefully, I'll be able to see him too. But we'll see. But yeah. it looks like they're very excited about the whole thing. Yeah. Try to hook up with yeah. Curtis. That's nice. Yeah. Wouldn't that be Hell nice? Of a guy. Hell of a guy. Yeah. yeah. He sure is. Yeah. yeah. When uh, so, he had his little, he had his little thing with the Mets, and mm-hmm. he was such a nice guy. Oh, he so still I used is. I watched he's the Mets just... every night when he played for them. He, you know, he didn't light the world on fire, but he certainly gave it his all all the time. Oh, and All the time. So, and he could hit the home run, boy. A real gentleman. Uh, yeah. Great with kids. Great with charitable things. I mean, he's really one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. Yeah, You're whenever he was Jackie. on the post game show. Yeah, when when whenever he was on the post game show, I used to be enthralled with yeah. his. Uh, he oh, just, he's such a great he guy. So nicely, he, he just felt like you knew him almost. Like right. I know you do. But I certainly but that's don't the know. type of guy he is. That's the yeah. type of guy he is. Yeah. yeah. And, and he wears cool. his high socks just like uh, Jackie did. I like I love that. Jackie. Love Jackie. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, he's a great. He's a great human being. Uh huh. Wish him the best of luck. Yeah. Sure. 
Well, you know what? He's going to land on his feet no matter what happens because he could be no matter what. He could walk right. He could walk right into uh, MLB TV and be a host of a show or whatever. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. He's got all those tools. He's got everything. He has he could all be a those coach. tools. He could, could yeah, be a coach. He could, he could be a, a broadcaster. He's got it all. A manager, anything he wants. Yeah, absolutely. Depends a on what he wants to do. A tremendous human being, right? Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. So he even he even fun. had his little little time with the Dodgers. Yes, he did, and which was exciting yeah. for me to see uh-huh. him there. Although it wasn't really a great season for him, but. No, he didn't he helped a little bit. set the league no. on fire or anything. But No, but yeah. Randy was, you know, he's up there in age, so it's it's not like sure. it used to be. Yeah. You know? And then yep. Sunday, or Friday morning, I'm speaking at Target Field again to a bunch of kids. Oh, good. That'll be fun. Yeah. That's oh, great. you keep your hand in it. I'll tell you, that's good. That's very yeah, good. I love it. You know, I love it. It would really, it, it'd really, it'd be a shame if you, if you didn't. Do it a lot of times. I mean, if you only no. do it once a year, that would. No. I'm at Target gotta... Field about 20 times, 25 times That's a year. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I'm That's phenomenal. Love... Anytime I can. How do you get in kids... there? Do they send the carpet? Do you drive in there or what? Well, I drive in, right in there, yeah. Yeah. I have a badge. I have a badge, a parking pass, everything. So Good. I just walk in. Yeah. Nice. It's a beautiful stadium, Peter. Oh, sure. Target field is gorgeous. Oh, I don't, I don't doubt it at all. I don't doubt the it. The twins are hot right now. All of a sudden. Yeah, they're doing okay. They're doing okay all of a sudden again. I think they've won okay. five or six in a row. You know, they were dead in the water for a while. Now we got to get our Dodgers going. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. <laughs> no. I mean, uh, if anybody could do it, it'd be Linda Wilson. But I don't know if she has the power. <laughs> To uh, will them yeah, to score some runs. I know uh, it's it's funny when when you you and I and uh, and um, Bernie Rose are watching and yeah. we're all connected on we're messenger each other. and stuff. Right. We're so frustrated. Yeah. Uh, I could just I could just picture I could just picture through my phone like somebody. Throwing the chair or kicking the cat or something like that. It's so well, I got in late last night, and I'm listening. I'm reading all these texts that you and Bernie are doing, and I'm yeah. laughing so hard. You guys were <laughs> like a comedy show. It was love. I, I just loved it. <laughs> Finally, I had to pipe in and say, "Hey, I'm here too. Keep it going." It was so funny. That's good. Oh That's my good. god, it was funny. Yeah, great. Nothing yeah, like well, baseball. you know, dark humor. When when yeah. you're, when your team is not doing well and you can make jokes about it, it's funnier. Yeah, what are you, you going to do? I mean, you well, can't. You can't, you can't no. do anything else. But, you know. No, and the Diamondbacks are hot right now. They're they're a very very good team. Yep. Well, so we'll, we'll see. see how it pans out. Yeah. We'll see how it pans out, and I'm really interested in what's going to happen at the trade deadline. Yeah. See if they're going to make any moves or whatever. I I read uh, our friend. Um, Excuse me. Uh, who's who's our friend on Facebook? Howard. Uh, oh, Howard. Howard uh, Rose. No, it's not Rose. It's Howard Cole. Howard Cole. Howard Cole. Howard yeah. Cole. Right. He's he's very he's very very well versed. He's very in oh, he's terrific. In, yeah, he's he terrific. is terrific. He is terrific. Yeah. He made a very good point. He wrote an article um, for Forbes. I think he writes for Forbes. Magazine. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He wrote, an, he wrote an article that, you know, if the Dodgers fall out of it completely, I mm-hmm. mean, if they just go completely bottom right. bottom up, they're not going to deal no. at the deadline because there's no, no reason to. No but reason if to. they're in it, if they're in it, if they're alive, if they're breathing, if their yeah. heart is pumping and they're doing okay, then he said, "Watch for them to make maybe even make a wild move for uh, Manny Machado, right? Manny Machado. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. Right. But he, the point that he made, which yeah. I took, which was, is a very good point. If they're dead, they're dead. 
Right. They're not going to. But if they're still kicking, if they still have a heartbeat and they still have a right. chance, right. then watch the moves they make and see how interesting right. that'll be. Yeah, it could so, be. That's right. We'll and you know, out. like Yogi said, it ain't over till it's over. It ain't over, over till it's over. <laughs> it ain't over till it's over. But I tell you this, at July, July the fourth, let's say. Now yeah. the trading deadline is July the thirty first. But 31st, uh, right. by by July the fourth, if they're less, if the Dodgers are less than ten games out, yeah. I would say, and either at five hundred or a game or two above five hundred. I would say they will be players. Yeah. They will they will make moves, big moves. Yeah. But mm-hmm. if they're under 500 and over 10 games out, I don't think they'll do right. anything. They might not, because in some cases they'd be borrowing someone for uh, just a couple months because they're going to be a free agent. You know. That's exactly that's exactly yeah. the point. So, so if they have a chance to win. Machado. If yeah. they have a chance to win, they'll go for Machado, and uh, yeah. you know, and hope that he kicks them over the line. But uh, yeah. if they don't, if they feel that they really their chances aren't that good, yeah. they won't spend good money after bad. They won't throw, you know, you know, you, you, you just can't do it. It doesn't doesn't make any sense. Doesn't if the trading deadline sense. was tomorrow, I guarantee they probably wouldn't do anything. Really? You know what I mean? I don't if know. It was tomorrow. I don't know because well, there's, you know, they they got a lot of problems right now with a lot of injuries. Oh boy! I mean, oh. every year they have you tremendous. Know, I hate, injuries. I hate, I hate to say mm-hmm. that I told you so about yeah. Kershaw being injured. Yeah, right. But you, you know the way he was pitching, the way he was giving up home run after home run yep. after home run. That's right. There's something Never wrong. saw that before. That's right. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Right. That doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. That doesn't same not thing with Jensen. Happen. Jensen's not yeah. the same Jensen. Kenley, he's not the same. Kenley. No, no. no. Jensen, there's, something wrong. there's something wrong with him. Something yeah, wrong with Jensen there is. too. Now, uh, what's his face? Uh, Turner's coming back. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, who knows? I mean, that was a bad injury he had, and then yeah, you're swinging was. with your wrist. I mean, I, know. I don't know. First, he's going to have to fight the rust. And then who knows how strong his, you know, his he wrist may, is going to be. May, he may never be good again. You never know. Never, I hope he is, but I don't know. Yeah, so do I. But I he's at that he age. He's, he's at he that may, age. He's at, JT's at, at that age. He may never be good again. I mean, if this How do you like old, him? How do you like this? Uh, you know what? He's the league and hitting. It's almost embarrassing. Here's a guy <laughs> we weren't. Here's a guy right. we weren't even going to allow play one right. at bat right. last January. They didn't think, they didn't think he was going to be there on opening no. day or in spring. No, anyway. but then, you know what, with all the injuries and stuff, yeah. here he is doing his thing. And but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, he's a good trade chip. Yes, I know is. his. I know his salary is ridiculous. His yeah. salary is absolutely ridiculous. But if yeah. he keeps hitting like this and the Dodgers are going right. nowhere, they can yeah. trade him. Sure. I mean, he's yep. looking great. He, he's he slimmed down. He's in good shape. He's he's moving fast in the outfield. He, I mean, he's doing like the old camp a little bit. Well, yeah. Well, what? So we'll see. We'll see. Whatever. I mean, I think okay, he's... Okay, my friends. What do you think? 360. We'll wrap it up. 360, I think. You know that? Who's sick? What are you talking about? He, he's batting 360. Camp. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. See, the, the, the only that? thing to me, the, the only thing to me is this about Kemp. I got nothing against Kemp, nothing at all. I don't either. I, I don't hold any grudges, nothing like that. No. He lost right. twenty five, thirty five pounds and stuff. He came to camp in great shape yeah. and stuff. He knew yeah. he was fighting for his baseball life. He yeah. changed his attitude in the clubhouse. I read. Yes, he did. Uh, yes, he did. You know what? But for the Dodgers who went to the seventh game of the World Series last right. year. Right. And you and I both know they should have won that World Series. I'm sure they should. We both know sure they, they should have won that World Series. Sure. And they went to the seventh game. To have a guy dominating the statistics of your team that yeah. you weren't counting on whatsoever yeah. in the wintertime, yeah. <laughs> slightly embarrassing. 
If I had told you, Peter, that in the middle of May, Kemp will be batting 360, I think you would have sent the psychiatrist after me. I, I would have said, first of all, he's not even going to make. The, he's not even going to make the team out of spring training. You know, that's what I would have said. Not only Wish was he well. going to be hitting 360, he's he wasn't going to be on the team. Well. He yeah. went through a lot too. I mean, all the injuries. And, yeah. And, oh, he slammed into that fence, and his career yeah. was almost over. So I yep. wish him well, but we'll see. We'll see. You can't. You, can't, you know, the Dodgers. I, I was a realist in the winter time. I knew Taylor. How can Taylor have a year like that again? No. Taylor came out of nowhere last year. Right. Nowhere. Man hurt. Seager hurt. 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 Kershaw hurt. JT hurt. Tolls hurt. Bellinger's not hitting real good. Uh, well, Bellinger. 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 They found that low inside pitch. Yeah. He'll always. He'll always swing at that pitch. Yeah. He'll always make yeah. outs with that pitch. You know what? It, 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 it's, it's not a guy. I know if Linda Wilson were listening to this, she would be very angry with me because I'm yeah. such a pessimist. But I think she, it's more of a realist. A, it's more a, of a realist. Yeah. You know what? It's more of a realist. I mean, uh, everything that could go wrong has gone yeah. wrong. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Everything that could go wrong has, has been, gone yeah. Wrong. Yeah. Okay. That's right. And and they find themselves where they find themselves. Yeah, I mean, right. they have a worse record than oh, anybody That's would have believed. Good. I mean, right. you know, no one would believe it. I mean, even yeah. the Giants are way ahead of them. So you know yeah. they suck. Yeah. Right. You know they suck. All right, my friend. This has been fun. Okay. Always Ronnie, good to talk baseball. Yeah, it's always good to shoot the breeze, especially about the yeah. greatest game in the world. That's and, right. Um, That's right. I thank you, you know, very it's, much. It's for... like a kid. We we can get mad at them sometimes because yeah. they did something out of line, but we still love them. You know? Oh, sure. Same thing with this. Absolutely. You know? Same yeah. thing with the whole sport. You know, you think, right. well, wait a minute. This guy, Manafred, he wants to, he wants to put a runner at second in the extra innings. Yeah. Yeah. Or he That's wants to good. realign. He wants to realign every division into two no. divisions. He, yeah. he wants to have no more American League or National League. He wants all of those things that are wrong with the sports, just like you said, you can get mad at your right. kid, but you still love him, right. or you get mad at your right. dog when he does something wrong, right. but you still love him. Right. That's right. that's the way it is with baseball. The whole game, that's right. not only that's just right. not only your favorite team or teams, right. but mm-hmm. the whole sport, the whole MLB package, Absolutely. the whole thing. You know, the game is long, long, this and that, yeah, and blah blah blah. But we still watch, don't we? We sure do, and the attendance is up every year. Uh, so you leave it alone. If it's broken, then you fix it. But it's not broken. Yep. So I agree with you. Agreed. All right, Agreed. my friend. All right. Take until care. next week. Ronnie, okay. take it easy. I want to thank everybody okay. for listening. This is Comfortably Zone Radio. Uh, the 50s when bums and gents walk the streets of New York. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night.